Hey, Kara Ustrovs here with realagriculture.com. I am here today at the National No-Till Conference in St. Louis, Missouri, and I have here with me John Jackson, who is with, he's, sorry, forgive me, what's the company name again? My company is called Global Neighbor. We make the Weed Seed Destroyer. Absolutely. Okay, so tell me a bit about the Weed Seed Destroyer. What is it? So what we do is we take the output from the combine, the sieve section, where all the weed seeds generally reside, and we take it, we expose it to a light system, and then what happens is those seeds don't become plants the next year. Okay, so what light wavelength are we talking about here? Yeah, so we're going to use uh, some mid-IR, so it's kind of a wavelength where if you are, uh, if you would felt it, it would feel like warmer because of it. So what we're gonna do is warm up the seed a little bit, and then we're going to hit it with this blue light. And then when we do that, we're gonna damage a little bit of the a little bit of the seed, and then that seed won't become a plant. So tell me a bit about the process. It's an attachment that goes into the bottom of your com combine, or how does that kind of work? Yeah, so right at the back end where the uh, sieve output is, we're going to put a couple baffles in there and we're going to direct the sieves downward into our hopper system. Then the hopper system is going to put it into an auger. The auger is going to run it through our light system. At the end, we're going to blow it back up into the chopper and then it will go back out to the field. So, so, so tell me a bit about what you got here. You got some props? Yes, yeah, so, yeah, so this is a John Deere 670 combine. Uh, our first one is a 680 that we put our, our weed seed destroyer on. And it's really neat because you can kind of see right here this is the 670 as it is. And then this is our weed seed destroyer. We actually 3D printed an exact model of it. And you can see it bolts right up in and sits right up in this uh, section right back here. <laughs> and the neat thing about these models is this is a scale model and we actually verified the scale model matched exactly. So it was a, it's a pretty good prop. A lot of times people don't know where we're actually pulling the chaff and it's kind of easier to see where we're getting it with these. Great, awesome. And how fast does all of this actually happen? The neat thing is we, we heat that seed up and we expose it to the blue light within a second and a half. So the combine is producing about like a, like a five gallon bucket of chaff every second. And so we're going to process that chaff in a second and then, um, and then go ahead and blow it back out into the field. So the chaff is the only thing that goes through it? Right. So we're going to separate out the, you know, the back end of the combine. Three quarters of the, the material is the straws and the, the leaves. The chaff is the fine particulate matter. And it's also where the seeds reside. Okay, and w tell me a bit about, I guess, uh, w what sort of crops this works on and what sort of weed seeds it works on. Like, is there specific ones you're targeting? Yeah, so we've, we've tested against the eight most common weed seeds in Ohio. I'm from Ohio, so we start there. Um, we've been testing it on wheat, soybeans, and, and, and Louisiana State's been doing stuff with rice chaff, with rice. And um, so that's where we, where we are right now. Good, good efficacy in those and uh, a good performance. Okay, talk a bit about uh, efficacy, as you said. W what are you totally seeing there? So our goal is to get at least 85% on the broad set of seeds that will hit the device. In Palmer Amaranth, we're at 97 to 99%. Um, Things like ryegrass and foxtail and the grasses were way above 99%. We're really, those are really easy for us in this technique to control. And then some of the bigger seeds, like um, they're, they're more difficult and we're, we're, we're in the more 80%, like something like a morning glory or, you know, these where they have those hard shells. And then volunteer, uh, like wheat volunteer, you know, volunteer, it's really a weed the next year, right? Um, we Wheat volunteer, we're pretty good. We're like 50% on that. And then corn and soybeans, we're, we're not at all good at those. So mainly the weeds. And some of the challenges you've seen so far? There's always so many challenges. Um, and the, the, we're working with a, just a fantastic group of farm operators. We've got 15 folks. These guys are gracious with their time and their equipment and their advice. Um, we were able to work through the flow, the flow restrictions, right? So you got to match that flow to the combine. 
We got to get the efficacy up where they, they need it to be. We got to make sure we don't impact the combine operation. So when that combine's going, that just needs to go. They don't need to stop or slow down or adjust anything. And so those are, those are the challenges. Uh, we've met them um, and we're in the field with uh, units. We expect to be in the field with test units this year and then next year be into some commercial sales. Okay, and what are you seeing, I guess when it comes to resistance, how does this kind of play into all of this? You know, organic growers, things like that, we're, this, this could be kind of a revolutionary idea. Yeah, I mean, so uh, as far as resistance on the, the weeds, this is really, a, a, I think, just a really wanted solution. We've had all kinds of producers call us up about Palmer Amaranth, you know, um, uh, Italian ryegrass, you know, just they kind of go through all these things where they're struggling with these weeds. And this is a great solution that will be used in tandem with the other things that they're doing in the field. So, you know, it will be a great tool in the shed. Uh, it will work with the herbicide resistance problem and reduce it. Uh, there was a study that the Australians did where they did a harvest weed seed control. And um, they said, okay, if we had only 80% efficacy, right? Uh, they showed that herbicide resistance took like 30 years to show up, whereas with no harvest weed seed control, it showed up in 10 years. And we saw that in the States, 10 years. And by 20 years in, we started to have a pretty good problem with it. And, and now is this just a prototype or has this actually been launched? So this has not been launched. We are in prototyping and we'll be in prototyping this year. And so we're dialing out those last those last little bits to make it a product, and then uh, we'll have it in some commercial sales next year. And any anticipation of expanding some of your research further north for our Canadian audience? <laughs> so the Canadian audience is really good, right? Um, we uh, we would like to, and in fact, we're, we're doing a lot of our tests up in Canada because there's, um, I think you guys are really worried about getting Palmer and things like that coming from the states, you know, not to blame us, but <laughs> I think there's a concern that some some things may migrate north of the border, and uh, so it's really neat that Canadian farmers and operators that we spoke to are much are really proactive. They're they're looking ahead. They're saying, I know this is going to be a problem, and they want our so solution, even though they may not be having a problem right now. Now, they're definitely, not to focus too much on Canada, but I mean, we struggle with resistant weeds such as, you know, kochia, wild oats, especially I'm in southern Alberta. Yes. Is that anything you're currently working on? And so the wild oats for sure, because I that's, that goes right on down um, into our wheat producers, right? Um, and there's some other ones that you mentioned I don't know about. I'm going to have to look at those. And I think you guys do a lot of canola, right, production. And so we haven't tested on canola chaff yet. So we're... Um, uh, we're looking toward doing that in this in the next kind of phase of this rollout. Awesome, thank you very much.